men to take their seats. It's very exciting to be here with everyone. My name is Jane Bryan, and I'm the Director of Alumni Affairs. I'm also the class of 1989, and um, this is one of the fun things that I get to do, is be up on stage with uh, amazing alumni, amazing artists, and fantastic professors that we're honoring tonight. So I hope everybody will enjoy the program, and um, thank you very much for coming. It's a great weekend, and we can't, we're just thrilled that everybody's back back in real life. So let the show begin. Thank you for coming. Hello, and welcome to the Bard College Awards. I'm Casey Sirota, President of the Bard College Alumni Association Board of Governors. This award ceremony is hosted by the Board of Governors, and the awardees are nominated and chosen by the board as the elected representation of the Bard College Alumni Association, and led by our nominations committee, co-chaired by Sonia Hood, class of 1990, and Ryan Messina, class of 2006. We are thrilled this year that the Bard Awards ceremony can take place in the Fisher Center for the Performing Arts in a more complete way, actually with an audience this year. The last two years, the special events staff and the Office of Development and Alumni Affairs managed to pull off delayed and changed commencement activities to celebrate our Bardians in the best and safest ways possible. We are grateful and in awe of all their work for those events and for all the extra efforts that are going into making the 2022 commencement the biggest and best of all commencements. <laughs> as a boy from Detroit, I saw Bard as a place that would expand my horizons a place that is connected with the larger world. This is the place where I truly learned to think for myself, to analyze, research, and stand up for what's right. With so much heartbreaking news in the last few days and months, from Ukraine to Buffalo to Uvalde, Texas, it can be hard to remember that we are here in a place that matters, a place that is striving to create the change we want in the world. When I talk with friends and colleagues, I tell them about Bard, and they're always amazed at what our college its faculty, staff, students, and alumni are doing. They're in awe of what this place accomplishes and the attachment our community feels to Anna Dale and Hudson. This year is no exception. The college has worked to have students from Afghanistan in the wake of the military withdrawal. Our network has continued to grow with the participation of the Open Society University Network and the global connections that that brings. And of course, the challenge grant from the Open Society Foundations and the Soros family is bringing the financial security and the ability to continue the college mission of being at the forefront of education and civil society. The awardees we recognize here today embody the spirit of this college and our mission of being rooted in social justice. We need more Bardians out helping in the world. There's so much need for civically minded citizens. This is something that becomes ingrained for us. Bardians think about how to make a difference every day. Today's ceremony recognizes a number of alumni, staff, and friends of the college who have done remarkable things. From their support of the college and philanthropic endeavors, to equality in healthcare, exhibiting their painting internationally, and helping students solve math problems. I congratulate all of their achievements and I will let our present presenters and nominators fill you in about our award recipients this evening. Thank you for being here to celebrate our honorees. I now turn it over to President Leanne Boston. So is everybody going to have fun? So this is a new setup. For those of you who are veterans of this event, this is the first time we've had the awardees and their presenters on stage. So I can't, either looks like competing juries <laughs> or a sold out piano recital. <laughs> it also could be a game show. You know, we ask the questions and these are the two teams. It looks like the faculty is on this team, which, uh, that's exactly right, so I think uh, I'd bet on this side. 
It's a little embarrassing for them. You know, I think they would prefer to be seated where you are and then, but the awkwardness of getting out, you know, from the seat, especially the older ones, it makes this shorter. And um, we could do it like the Farewell Symphony, so when you get your award, you walk off the stage, and then you know who the last person is. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> we're going to have a lot of fun, and I want to thank all of you. Giving out awards is, um, is an awkward thing. Um, at Bard, in the senior dinner now, for those of you who remember, awards are given in the memory of faculty and alumni, it's a wonderful event because there's so many wards that um, there's really nobody left out. And we like to tell them graduating from Bard is a little harder than graduating from most places. First, we have to do all that stuff in the first year. Some of you never had to do it, but the more recent students do. And then you have to do moderation. You have to write a senior project. And somebody examines it and gives you a grade. You know, you can go to very fine name brand places and get a degree and do absolutely nothing, by comparison at least. So um, it is really an achievement. And when you give awards to alumni, as we do mostly tonight, and others uh, that do work that we participate in, um, there are so many worthy people. But one thing I assure you, there's not a cynical award given here. There's no payoff, no bribe. I wish there were, but um, there is only really our affection and gratitude to all the people on the stage. We normally acknowledge, I don't know whether any of them are here, the honorary degree recipients for tomorrow. Um, as KC, and I want to thank KC for his work, and eventually you'll hear from Jim, our chair. But um, this is a delayed commencement. So one of the things that, that you'll discover in the commencement, even if it rains and there's thunder and so forth, is that um, there is a kind of um, unleashed fury of the college age generation that was locked down for two and a half years. It's one thing for adults, some of us welcome being six feet apart. <laughs> Some of us welcomed wearing a mask so no one would recognize us. Um, I always associate the mask with the Lone Ranger somehow. Um, and the isolation, you know, we got used to it. But young people come to college to be with other young people in a class, in the dormitory when we were all asleep, and to be robbed of that. And I want to tell you that our undergraduates behaved in the most exceptional and exemplary way. This class <clears throat> really distinguished itself. They observed all the protocols and the shifting protocols. We kept our case numbers unbelievably low. And the community was just terrific. And the difficulties that arose because of the isolation um, all seemed manageable. And I want to thank the faculty and the staff who ran this really unprecedented and difficult set of months and years. And the trustees who backed the college because of the expense of doing so was extraordinary. So there's something to celebrate, and a lot of people are coming back, and um, I think that it will be a moment of great um, exhilaration. The commencement speaker is Deb Hatland, who is the Secretary of the Interior, as you know. Uh, Ala Alawani, I think, is here. Aswani is here, and there he is, the most distinguished Egyptian writer. Allah Al Aswan is really to be admired as an exemplar of what role writers should be take in our society. And it's uh, <clears throat> very touching that the son of one of 
such a great writer who is a teacher here for 20 years, Chinua Achebe's son, will get an award for his work. And um, somehow Chinua passed down from father to son the ideals by which he lived also as a writer. Uh, Jennifer Torches, I don't think is here, a mathematician, um, Jerome Cohn is um, the political theorist and uh, keeper of the Hannah Arendt tradition. The president of Georgetown, the Jesuit Joe McShane, wonderful example of the finest traditions of the Jesuit order. And Eric Montley, a great um, administrator in the arts and humanities. And our own Zena Parkins, she is not yet, who came to bar the same year I did and uh, did a, has made a fantastic career as a performer, a very innovative performer. And Marcus Roberts, the jazz pianist. And I think Arthur Avilas is here, is that right? Right. <clears throat> He's here to pay honor to Jean Churchill, who is retired. And um, tomorrow morning, um, there will be a dedication at 10 a.m. in the um, atrium of Olin, and we're naming it for David and Ruth Schwab, who I think they're celebrating their 70th reunion, and they represent the two most loyal alumni to this college. David hired me, which um, I never let him forget. Um, and uh, a wonderful individual who truly served this institution in a way that could hardly be matched. And um, uh, I do um, want to recognize both Brandon and Mustafiz, who are celebrating their 25th anniversary, both of whom are trustees of the college. And we're giving for the first time the Laszlo Bito Award, which is for the very courageous Hungarian freedom fighter who came here in 1956 and invented the first really effective drug against glaucoma and then went back to Hungary to become a writer and an activist against the return of right-wing tyranny. Um, I do... Uh, I want to say that we have many anniversaries um, to celebrate this weekend. And I want to simply say a few words that um, before introducing Jim as a way of um, <clears throat> paying tribute to the board and what has happened. As many of you know, we have launched a capital campaign and uh, it was spurred by a very generous gift from George Soros and the Open Society Foundation to give Bard an endowment. It was $500 million, and it required us to match it with $500 million. <clears throat> we had our annual board meeting today, and I'm pleased to say that um, we're very close. We decided not to take the five years to match it, but that was given to us, but we do it in one year by June 30th. And I'm pleased to say, I think we're going to make it. We reported today that we have raised so far 448 million to match it. So, that sounds better than it really is, but the fact is, these are what was very generous is that the 500 million, which will come to us in cash, once we raise the 500 match, uh, can be matched by pledges and gifts and irrevocable commitments to give. So that has made it easier. It's actually a very generous set of terms. And in those set of terms, we've come to 448, and I think we'll make it to the 500, which means that the college's endowment will rise immediately by about $600 million, which is um, a terrific boost and an assurance of the college's long-range stability. I also want to say that we're about to 
launch the second phase of that campaign, which is some new facilities. We're going to build a new dormitory. We're short housing. And this area has become extremely attractive. And the housing prices have skyrocketed, making it increasingly hard for students to live off campus. So we're building about a 350 person dorm. Um, right where the temporary dorms once were on the way out of North Campus beyond Robbins, near the gatehouse, in the field, by the woods. And then right across from here, uh, a building that's completely funded and will go into construction in the next 12 months, which is a ma magnificent studio building for dance and theater, designed by Maya Lin, and um, who designed the Vietnam Memorial, and uh, a fantastic artist and architect whose daughter um, was a student here and um, a friend of many of the members of the faculty. And uh, it's a magnificent building and uh, it will itself have its own um, tourist admirers just as this building does. And Frank Gehry was her teacher at Yale. So she describes the building as a conversation between herself and uh, Frank Gehry. And then we intend to expand the library and even build a field house and a new science building um, near Rose and Hageman, which will house um, the rapid expansion of the science, mathematics, and computing division at Bard. But the most impressive thing I have to say is the fact that Bard is the place with the largest number of Afghan refugee undergraduates. We have 35. <laughs> We have 35 now and 50 will come in the fall and you will hear as a result of the veto award more about that work. Um, we have a fantastic and diverse student body from all over the world and all over the country and um, we have about 400 who work in programs of civic engagement. Um, we have um, students who have done fantastic work in the sciences and in literature, in writing, and in music, and in the, all the arts, and fantastic graduate programs. Uh, and uh, it's a, it is a unique institution, and uh, it makes an enormous contribution with the Bard Prison Initiative, and the micro colleges, and the Bard High School Early Colleges, of which there are eight in six cities, we give all together slightly over 6,000 degrees, uh, most of them in high schools and other programs abroad. Uh, Jonathan Becker, who is the acting president of the American University of Central Asia, where we give degrees to over 1,200 students this year. We have the largest Palestinian-American academic collaboration. And with honor, we were thrown out of Russia in the run-up to the war in the Ukraine. And, and with the help of our colleague, Masha Gessen, we're looking to uh, create a center for fleeing Russian dissidents and former colleagues of ours who are now in danger of incarceration and um, uh, real oppression. So we... Um, and we have a wonderful group of people who does this, members of the faculty, members of the administration. Those of you who are Bard alumni should be proud of the idealism and the originality and the uh, courage that the institution shows. So um, uh, we can always do better, and we will, but this is a moment to celebrate. And all of this is made possible by the people who employ me. And I'm pleased that our chair is an alumnus, actually came to Bard the same year I did. True fact. True fact. Do you like false facts? No. So we, yes, it's a true, it's a true fact, yeah. And um, who has been a fantastic supporter and leader of this college and um, a great friend. And so without further ado, I introduce a former drama dance major,
James Chambers. Is this thing on? Yeah, it's on. Uh, um, well, Leon has acknowledged that we're in the midst of a college bowl. I don't think any of you are old enough to remember that, but he also alluded to a Lone Ranger. And so, yes, Leon, we will never forget David Schwab's hire, ever. Um, so, no, seriously, welcome, everybody. Um, or from where I come, welcome, y'all. Uh, it is a great evening to celebrate. Um, Lord mercies, we need it. We need to celebrate. Um, true fact on that, or as they would say in New Orleans, true that. Um, and good evening. Um, I first have to say, in reference to just the collect, some of the collected group here, um, my, my indebtedude, my connection, um, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Hamill. There's about six degrees of separation between him and I. Um, you could not tell that by how we look. But um, his son has slept in my crib in New York City. His grandchildren and I share a birthday. Um, he's a jock like I am, and I have to congratulate him because Dub Nation made the NBA Finals last night. So, congratulations. Um, a great and beautiful team. Um, and it was he, along with Leon, that twisted my arm to take this particular gig. Um, I don't know how many years ago. Um, several years ago. So, any weirdness that I manifest on Bard's part is officially partially due to Mr. Hamill. Um, and it is weird that, he, that you are leaving. I've got to say that. It's, it's just, it feels odd, but thank you for everything you've done, you Wisconsin alum. Um, uh, I also have to say that um, my class is represented quite well with Rebecca and Naylan um, and, and Zena tomorrow. I mean, we all came in in 1975 with Leon, and I don't know if the bets were in that we would last this long. Um, and um, I think that's due to the uniqueness of Bard, um, the uh, definite uniqueness of Leon. Um, we, we have lasted. And um, in a later generation, there's Arthur, representing the great Eileen Pasloff and the great Pro Professor Churchill. So, um, um, and I just learned today that Robbins still has the infirmary. Like, like we're changing that. Um, and please help us get over the line for this 500 million. Anything, anything, Bitcoin, anything. Um, um, but seriously, I I'm going to stop here and say that... Um, Bard is a wonderful place, and it is great to be here and celebrate it. And um, our stage and our theater and our campus and our world is full of brilliance because of Bard. I have the honor of introducing George Hamill, trustee of the college, who will receive the Bard Medal, the Bard College Alumni Association's highest award.
for, for those of you who are new, it goes like this. We announce the person, there's a presentation, and then um, a citation is read. And this is the citation for George Hamill. We honor you, George F. Hamill, with the Bard Medal, Bard's highest recognition for service to the college. You have been on the Board of Trustees for more than a decade, most recently as Vice Chair. Your extraordinary gifts of leadership and persuasiveness help steer the college through the dangerous waters of the financial crisis of 2008. <clears throat> you provided the strategy for refinancing the college and guided the launching of the college's highly su successful endowment campaign. The father of two fine Bard graduates, you took precious time out of your brilliant career as an investment banker and vintner, and your love of sports, to assist their alma mater. Bard is proud that for many years, Bard tempered your fierce loyalty to your own alma mater, the University of Wisconsin, and its beloved Badgers. The Bard community thanks you and Pam, your wonderful partner, for your service and generosity. I can just say I'm more than slightly embarrassed and humbled by this. Um, and incredibly honored and appreciative of this. It's a great place. Thank you. I now call upon James C. Chambers, class of 1981, and chair of the Bard College Board of Trustees, and Brooke Jude, associate professor of biology, to bring forward the recipient of the John and Samuel Bard Award in Medicine and Science. Go to our respective podium. Do you want me to go there? Oh. I have the honor of introducing Chide Chike Achebe, class of 1992, who will receive the John and Samuel Bard Award in Medicine and Science, given to honor a scientist whose achievements demonstrate the breadth of concern and depth of commitment that characterize the pioneer physicians for whom this award is named. We, we honor you, Chide Chike Achebe, for your pioneering work in public health, your efforts on behalf of the underserved and disadvantaged have become the hallmark of your commitment to fighting inequities in order to create a fair and just system of high quality healthcare delivery. Your father, Chinwe Achebe, the great writer and humanitarian and longtime faculty member here at Bard would be and is proud in, 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 the, in the spiritual world of your achievements and idealism. You have utilized the knowledge gained not only in graduate and medical school, but here at Bard as an undergraduate. Your alma mater congratulates your leadership on behalf of excellence in medical care for all, rich and poor, in this country and around the world. Thank you, everyone. Um, so I'm going to keep this brief since everyone else um, has. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking uh, President Leon Botstein um, and the Board of Trustees, uh, as well as the Chair, Mr. Chambers, and Brooke, 
for uh, being my sponsors. It's important for me to recognize my mother who's here, my wife, my three boys, my sister and her, um, my sister and, and my um, goddaughter. My sister says I'm the worst godfather ever uh, and I'm guilty and I'll, I'll make it up to you. Very briefly, Bard um, was where it started for me. Um, my professors, Hilton Weiss, I think I met outside Ferguson, Shilton, um, there are so many. Skiff, who was my supervising uh, um, academic uh, professor, um, so many others. This is such a special place. Bard got me into Dartmouth Medical School and then Harvard and Yale. I would not have done this without Bard College. The inspiration to work with the underserved came from the spirit of this place, the values of my parents, my dad, I'll try not to cry, my dad, uh, who's watching over us. Thank you, Leon, thank you, Bard. Um, when I'm in a position to really help, I'll come home. I now call upon Roland Augustine, member of the Board of Trustees, and Naylan Blake, class of 1982, and professor of studio arts to present tonight's recipient of the Charles Flint Kellogg Award in Arts and Letters. I have the great honor of introducing Rebecca Quaitman, class of 1983, wonderful friend, who will receive the Charles Flint Kellogg Award in Arts and Letters, given in recognition of significant contributions to the American artistic and literary heritage. We honor you, Rebecca H. Quaitman, for your innovative and wide-ranging accomplishments as a painter, installation artist, writer, and scholar. We take pride in your achievements as an alumna. They mirror with beauty, thought, and refinement, Bard's historic commitment to the arts. Your art challenges us and opens new vistas. You inspire us to hold fast to our belief that the arts play an indispensable role in creating a just, pluralist, and free democratic society. One thing, because a, I had, was in a very good class with Nayland and Zena and Rita McBride and many good artists. And uh, there's something about Bard. Every time I come here, I'm just, it's the best landscape. The landscape of this campus generates such good things, I really believe. So thank you very much. I'm very honored. I now call upon Stan Reichel, class of 1965 and trustee of the college, and Japheth Wood, associate professor of mathematics, to bring forward the John Dewey Award for Distinguished Public Service. I have the honor of introducing Zach Korzik, Master of Arts in Teaching, class of 2007, who will receive the John Dewey Award for Distinguished Public Service, which was established in 1990 to recognize extraordinary contributions by Bard alumni, alumnae, and others to the public sector or in the public interest. We honor you, Zach Korzik, for your remarkable achievements as an educator. Your commitment has been to correct a lingering def deficient in American education, the teaching of mathematics, 
your pioneering online mathematics program, Delta Math, has been a model of how high-quality computer-based online learning can be delivered to those most in need. Your focus is always on students and their capacity to learn, particularly the often difficult and counterintuitive aspects of our knowledge and understanding of the world. All right. Uh, hi there. That's my wife, Lori, in the audience. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> it is an honor to receive the John Dewey Award for Distinguished Public Service. As a graduate of Bard's Master of the Arts in Teaching program, I had the opportunity to study Dewey and his philosophy in education. Dewey believed that learning is a social, interactive process by which knowledge is constructed in a two-way dialogue between students and teachers, whose role is to facilitate experiences for the students to deepen their understanding and passion for the subject. Some may wonder whether Dewey would find it odd that Bard gave this award to the guy who made a website that feeds students infinite math practice until they understand it. However, as I began digging deeper into Dewey's writings, I really did find that there is nothing to show that he would approve of such a thing. So, and yet, over the years since I first created Delta Math in 2009, I have known many progressive constructivist teachers who have used Delta Math regularly. Take, for example, my math professor when I was here at Bard, Javith Wood. In my first summer at Bard, during the MAT program, all 10 of us in the math teaching program took Javith's class in abstract algebra and real analysis. Those math classes were like nothing I had ever taken. On the first day, he handed all of us a packet of a list of hundreds of theorems, lemmas, corollaries, definitions, and axioms. And each week, our homework was to try to prove at least one of the upcoming theorems using only the theorems that we were proved previously. And during each weekly three-hour class, we students would take turns presenting our proofs to the rest of the class, and Japheth would mostly stay completely silent as we all critiqued the logic of each other's work. And I actually really struggled in the beginning of that class because I had not majored in math and never had to write any proofs. But the structure of the class and the detailed feedback that Japheth gave on my written work led me to a breakthrough, and I cannot tell you how important those classes were to making me a better mathematician and therefore a better teacher. So if even Japheth, the dewiest of all math teachers, can make regular use of Delta Math, we must be doing something right. And he just told me they don't hate it. They don't hate it. <clears throat> and I will say from my own teaching practice that using Delta Math to help reinforce procedural fluency has really allowed me to free up class, uh, class time to focus on developing conceptual understanding. For more than 10 years, I developed the content for the site while teaching full time. During that time, my only concern was developing material that would help my students gain confidence and learn from their mistakes in an efficient way. And in no way was Delta Math designed to replace the teacher or automate learning. Now Delta Math has 12 employees, seven of whom are former math teachers, and we all understand what it takes to foster a community of learners who can see math as more than just a series of steps. On the other hand, being math teachers at heart, we do have a knack of writing out solutions as a series of steps. That's what we do. That's what the website is, essentially. We take great pride in the rigor of our content, the clarity of our explanations, creating animations or student interactivity with virtual mathematical objects in order to help students have an aha moment about a topic that they've been struggling with. And we constantly hear from teachers about what a difference Delta Math has made for the confidence and the achievement of their students. And it is humbling to see that over 50,000 math teachers have chosen to use Delta Math in their classroom this year. I give great thanks to Bard for preparing me both mathematically and pedagogically to have a successful 13-year teaching career where I learned so much and was able to channel that experience into developing a successful product that has influenced millions of students nationwide. Thank you.
I now call upon Mostafiz Shah Mohammed, class of 1997 and trustee of the college, and Anne Lauterbach, David and Ruth Schaub, professor of languages and literature to present the recipient of the Mary McCarthy Award. I have the honor of introducing May May Bersenbrugge, who will receive the Mary McCarthy Award given in recognition of engagement in the public sphere by an intellectual artist or writer. We honor you. We honor you, May May Bersen Brugge, for your work as a poet. The Mary McCarthy Award is given for the craft and beauty of your writing and for your engagement as a writer. You have connected poetry with the conduct of life through your collaborations with musicians, dancers, playwrights, directors, and actors, and most exceptionally with scientists who seek to understand the wonders and mysteries of nature. Bart is proud that you are the parent of an alumna, a gifted artist of her own right. Uh, thank you, Bard College, for the Mary McCarthy Award. I'm, I'm so honored by the company of your previous recipients. I wanted to tell you some of my threads to Bard College. Um, our daughter, Martha Tuttle, class of 2011. Um, my husband, Richard, uh, my husband's show, uh, Richard Tuttle, What is the Object? at Bard Graduate Center now. Conjunctions Magazine, where I've been editor since, an editor since the 80s. Um, my ongoing 40-year dialogue with your great poets. I want to thank uh, the students of the class of 2022 for the example you give of courage imagination, and service. I wrote my book, A Treatise on Stars, to explore um, a larger possibility, larger possibilities of an ecosystem that includes stars and Earth. One summer night, walking from our house after dinner. Stars make the sky almost white. The transparency hanging on its outer connectedness casts a current as accretion filling in of extravagant euphoric blooming. Then being as spirit and in matter is known here to there. I go home and tell my children to come out and look. The souls of my two children fly up like birds into branches of the Milky Way, chatting with each other, naming constellations, comparing crystals and fire. They exclaim at similarities between what they see in the sky and on our land. So, by wonder, they strengthen correspondence between sky and home. Earth is made from this alchemy of all children, human and animal, 
combined with our deep gratitude. I now call upon Jim Ottaway, Jr., Life Trustee of the College, and Jonathan Becker, Executive Vice President and Vice President for Academic Affairs, to present the three recipients of the Laszlo B. Z. Bito Class of 1960 Award for Humanitarian Service. Thank you. I have the honor of introducing Brian Billings, Aselia Umetalieva, and Omar Warich, Bard's first recipients of the Lazo Zibito 60 Award for Humanitarian Service, given in recognition of the extraordinary and selfless work of a member or members of the Bard community on behalf of the well being of individuals threatened by injustice, violence, and tyranny. Lazo Bito was not just a freedom fighter. But he was a warm and generous man who, with his wife Olivia, welcomed numerous Bard students into his home in Budapest over the years. Lazo would have been proud of Aselia, Omar, and Brian, who for eight weeks in August, September, and October of this year, with literally no sleep, gave of themselves selflessly for the well-being of students from Afghanistan. They embody the civic spirit that Laszlo and Bard have and are very deserving first recipients of the Laszlo Beto Award. We honor Brian Billings, Omar Warich, and Aselia Umetli Aba the first Lazo Bito 60 Award for Humanitarian Service. This award in honor of Lazo Bito, a Bard alumnus and freedom fighter in the Hungarian Revolution of 1956, who showed uncommon courage throughout his life in the struggle against tyranny, oppression, and human suffering. The three of you rescued hundreds of, literally 200, uh, vulnerable young people during the fall of Kabul in Afghanistan. You demonstrated the fortitude, resilience, and fearlessness required to reach out and help the innocent in wartime. Strategic insight and tactical ingenuity made it possible for an astonishing number of potential victims of violence and tyranny to reach safety in a moment of great danger. You gave a new lease of life to many who had no cause for hope. I have never seen anything so courageous and ingenious as that rescue effort, which was so successful. Thank you. It was a group effort. We couldn't have done it without the college. I couldn't have done it without colleagues, and not just the colleagues here. And Jonathan was as much a part of this as we were. So thank you, Jonathan. Good evening. And I also want to say that so many stories that can be shared, but just want to say thank you for the great leadership of Jonathan Baker and colleagues who supported and keep supporting us in this great mission. Thank you all. Thank you. I, I echo that uh, Jonathan is the one who actually conceived this. As the Taliban was sweeping into Afghanistan, it was his foresight that saw how har it was harrowingly prescient to see what was coming and brought us together. 
and each in ourselves, while the three of us are over here, the many other colleagues from the organizations that we represent, American University of Central Asia, BARD, and myself from the Open Society Foundations, my colleague Anthony Richter is here as well, who, and many others who are part of that effort. Um, it's great that this award is named after Laszlo Bitto because it actually, that moment, recalled the traditions of BARD, whether it was welcoming people after the Second World War, or after 1956, or now. And most of all, I think also of the students. When I was a student, the only thing that stood in the way of me going to university was a transport disruption, a snow day perhaps, and a shocking lack of personal discipline. In, in the case of these students, they had just a few hours to pack their bags, to bid farewell to their families, to see their dreams crushed in Afghanistan, but hopefully not for the last time. Afghanistan is no longer in the news, unfortunately, but there are many people who are still there, many who are on the verge of suffering great hunger and hardship, many girls who can't go to school, many women who can't go to work. And it's tremendous what those students have been able to do, who are able to make that journey, uh, but I hope we can also think of the ones left behind. Thank you. We now turn to the presentation of Bardian Awards, which are the, a formalization of the Bard College Alumni Association's tradition of honoring longtime members of the Bard community. Tonight, we have the pleasure of honoring nine such colleagues with this award. In doing so, I call Brandon Weber, class of 1997 and trustee of the college, as the trustee sponsor for the Bardian Awards. I also have the pleasure of calling upon Tracy Pollock, class of 2007, and the director of the administration development at the Center for Curatorial Studies to join us at the podium with the first of tonight's Bardian Award recipients. I have the honor of introducing Marcy Asita, who will receive the Bardian Award. We honor you, Marcy Asita, for 33 years of devoted service to Bard, first and briefly with the Edith C. Bloom Art Institute, and then for the Center for Curatorial Studies and the Hessel Museum. You helped turn Bard into a renowned center for preservation and exhibition of contemporary art. You also enabled Bar to create one of the world's foremost programs for the education and training of curators. As director of the collection at the CCS and Hessel Museum, you acted as an indispensable guide and teacher to many generations of CCS master students. The growth and success of the CCS would not have been possible without you. You insisted on developing the highest ideals and most exacting standards, those that all museums and exhibition spaces should aspire to. You've been an enthusiastic proponent of new approaches and methods and made the hundreds of imaginative and path-breaking ex exhibitions that have taken place over the three decades at Bard possible. Your catalog of the Marley's Hessel Collection is a proper monument to your exemplary service to Bard. This requires a little bit of explanation. So <clears throat> this is not all she gets. <laughs> but we decided, since there's so many Bardian Awards, that we'd give you this, which may actually be more valuable in the long run than the chair you're going to get, which supposedly will look like this. And on the back of the chair, there will be <clears throat> an inscription which I'll read to you now. Before I do so, if you don't mind, Marcy, I want to pay a special tribute to two of the people on this side of the contest. First, to Brian Billings, our colleague, without whom the entire enterprise in Smolny in Russia would never have flourished. <laughs> and to Nayland Blake, who is the new head of our studio arts program, <clears throat> who is the best dressed person in this room. <laughs> 
So, Marcy, this is what it says on the back of the chair. We hope you'll sit in. And it says, to Marcia, who was an indispensable guide and teacher to many generations of master students and gave 34 years of devoted service to Bard. Thank you, Leon. I'd also like to thank uh, Marie-Louise Hessel, the founder of the Center for Curatorial Studies and Hessel Museum, uh, for her support, for being such an amazing role model, and most of all, for her friendship. I want to thank my colleagues across campus, uh, and most especially at CCS, for the years of collaboration. Everyone knows we can never do these jobs without everyone that works beside us. And I'm indebted to all of my colleagues. Um, I want to thank, just in particular, a few people. My colleague, Norton Batkin, who was our first director of the Center for Curatorial Studies. Tom Eccles, the current executive director, Lauren Cornell, my colleague Tracy, who gave me such a kind introduction. I appreciate her, her being here. And um, I'm losing my thoughts here. Uh, I guess most especially, you know, it's been an honor for me and a privilege to be a member of the Bard community. Um, to be part of CCS, I worked with every student from the beginning in 1992 until the current class who will graduate this May, and many curators, artists, uh, cultural practitioners. I've learned so much from them, had so much experience. It's been an amazing uh, career, and I understand that this has been um, really a privilege um, to have had this, this role. And so um, I'm really grateful for all that. And um, there was one more thing I wanted to say and I forgot, but uh, <laughs> thank you very much. I now call upon Whitney Slayton, Assistant Professor of Music, to announce our next Barding Award recipient. I have the honor of introducing Thurman Barker, who will receive the Bardian Award. As a composer and a performer, Thurman Barker, you brought jazz to Bard. For 30 years, you've inspired students in the classroom and led a dizzying variety of ensembles, while at the same time, continuing to compose music of exceptional elegance and originality. During your years at Bard, you sustained your remarkable career as a performer, collaborating with the finest jazz musicians of our time. Your reputation as a percussionist led you to enter the world of jazz as an organizer and producer. Generations of Bard students are indebted to your encouragement and instruction and to your idealistic and generous spirit, and above all, to your love of music as a listener, teacher, performer, and composer. We're playing a piece by Thurman tonight in honor of his retirement. And this has a quote from Bob Maynard, and it is, the only musical instrument we had was a jug or frying pan that they'd hit with a stick or a bone, and it made good music. First of all, I want to thank my wife, Lucette, and my son who are here, and my friend, Mr. Marcus Roberts, and Lynn, Jane, and Thane. Mr. President, 
In my own eyes, I have seen this institution transform itself into the 21st century. With your vision, I have seen art and science coexist on equal ground. Some of our students have even found a common thread between art and science for a project. With your vision, I have seen the science building constructed with the state-of-the-art technology. With your vision, I have seen an extension added to the music building with, for our growing jazz program. Also, I have seen you, Mr. President, reach across the globe to create an exchange program for students who want to study in America, only to be called undesirable. How dare he? Mr. President, the dean, the art division, the music department, and the college at large, I thank you for this opportunity to share into this vision that you have. This institution, no doubt, is distinct. As I receive this award, I will walk away into the next chapter in my life as a proud, proud Bardian. Thank you very much. And now call upon Eben Goodstein, Professor of Economics and Director of the Bard Center for Environmental Policy at Bard College, to join me in presenting the next recipient of the Bardian Award. I have the honor of introducing Norton Batkin, who will receive the Bardian Award. We honor you, Norton Batkin, for your service to the college First as the founding director of the Center for Curatorial Studies and its master's program, and subsequently as dean of graduate studies. Under your watch, the college's range of graduate programs expanded. You mastered the increasing complexity of accreditation and regulation, always insisting on the highest level of academic excellence and institutional integrity. Throughout your career at Bard, you shared with colleagues and students your brilliance, wit, kindness, and your own brand of principled pragmatism. As a member of the philosophy program, you have taught classes and tutorials at the intersection of art and philosophy. You've been among the most admired and intensely committed colleagues, teachers, and thinkers to have worked at Bard. Please accept this award as a token of the college's profound appreciation for your uncompromising and dedicated service. So, Norton, um, I'm going to give you this, <clears throat> which is in anticipation of a real chair, and on the back of it, it says, the task remains to discover, to discover what we need, a quote from Stanley Cavell. I would say that the, um, this award also um, is, for me, uh, a long history of work with uh, Stanley Cavell. And uh, I think that it, that will, you know, his, his abilities and the work that we were able to do together were invaluable to me. So, Thank you. I now call upon Gary Hagberg, the James H. Ottaway Jr. Professor of Aesthetics and Philosophy, to join me in presenting the next recipient of the Bardian Award. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, I have the honor of uh, introducing our dear friend and esteemed colleague, Daniel Berthold, who will receive the Bardian Award.
We honor you, Daniel Borthold, as one of the finest teachers in the college's history. Few faculty members have ever matched your capacity to inspire the desire to learn and excel among our students. You shared with us your unique gift, the ability to unravel the meanings of the most daunting texts in the philosophic tradition. In your courses, you have connected the conduct of philosophy to the leading issues of our time, particularly the environment and social justice. Your commitment to the Bard Prison Initiative, in particular, has been exemplary. As a leader within the faculty, you have fought for fairness, compassion, and excellence. The intellectual life of the college reflects your presence and commitment. You've practiced your vocation as an act of conscience and served as a guide to the ethics of the life of the mind. So on the back of his chair, Daniel's chair, is the following. The, sub the subjective thinker is not a scientist, scholar. He is an artist. To exist is an art. Well, I certainly can't disagree with that. My only disappointment tonight was that I was hoping to be named the best dressed uh, person on. Uh, I don't know. Coming from Vermont, this is about as good as it gets, and I, I, will, I will settle for second place. Um, I should say, in the interest of full disclosure, that while I am, in fact, retiring, uh, in fact, I'm not. Uh, this fall, I'm going to be beginning my 20th year of teaching at Eastern Correctional Facility, uh, so I will maintain a strong connection. <laughs> a strong connection with the college and some of its most exceptional students. Uh, I want to thank Leon for uh, many acts of kindness and generosity and friendship that he has extended to me over the years, from the small to the large, from the quite recent to the distant past. They've all meant a great deal to me, so thank you. And I want to thank Gary, who has been an amazing friend and colleague for 32 years now. I think of just one thing to thank him for, which is difficult. Um, I thought about it, and um, I realized that through thick and thin, Gary and I have spent so much time together laughing. And it might seem like a small thing, but it's not. Herman Melville said that a good laugh is a mighty great thing, and all too scarce a great thing. So I want to thank Gary for bringing me many mighty great things over the years. There are many more that I should thank, but let me just say that while this is in many ways a sad time for me, a time of parting, uh, of leaving a place that has given me so much, I feel blessed to have been in the company of colleagues who are so smart, so talented, so generous, and just such good people and students, over 3,000 of them, another 500 or so from, uh, from the prisons, who have also given me so much, have kept me young, and uh, have made me wiser by far than I would have been without them. And just one last uh, thing that I would like to thank the college for, it's here that I met Professor Melanie Nicholson who is the one person that I've actually laughed with even more than I have with Gary, which is saying a lot. And as a professor, Melanie has also taught me many things, incluyendo la diferencia crucial, pero misteriosa, entre estar y ser. Pues, pues, ahora quiero decir y puedo decir. Eres mi todo. Gracias por todo. And thank you to the college and, and everyone. Here. I now call upon Laura Battle. 
Professor of Studio Arts to join me in presenting the next recipient of the Baurian Award. I have the honor of introducing Ken Bueller, who will receive the Baurian Award. <clears throat> Teaching art is not easy. We honor you, Ken Bueller, for making it seem easy. As a teacher of art, you are what one might call a natural. You invited your students to explore painting and drawing with reference to nature and the inexhaustible magic of color. Your achievements as an artist and the luminous beauty of your work lent your voice as a teacher the authority sufficient to encourage both the beginner and the veteran. Few artists who have taught here have been as admired and respected and we are grateful for the dignity and respect you share with your students and colleagues. We thank you for 22 years of commitment to the Studio Arts Program of the college. All colors are the friends of their neighbors and the lovers of their opposites. Mark Chagall. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming. I'm really touched that so many of you showed up. And um, thank you, Leon, and thank you, Laura, for um, the work you did as my fa faculty sponsor and for deciding to hire me when you were sitting on the interview committee so, many years ago. So. Um, Anyway, I'm, I'm deeply honored to receive this award and to receive it in such uh, distinguished company as the people sitting on the stage right now. Um, I, it doesn't feel that very long ago that I started teaching at Bard, and I do remember very clearly one particular experience. Uh, the first time that I went to the Stevenson Library and I brought a large stack of art books to the checkout counter and the librarian was going through them and she turned to me at one point, she said, aren't you a little young for this? <laughs> and she held up my, barred, my newly minted Bard faculty ID card and she showed me that there was my picture and there was my name, but underneath my name it was printed the words faculty emeritus. <laughs> and though, even though I'd only been at Bard for a few weeks, I was pretty sure that was wrong. But I made a very bold decision at that moment, which was I decided to leave my faculty ID the way it was. Because that time, uh, that meant that every time I went to check out a book at the Stevenson Library, I saw that I was faculty emeritus. And I will admit, it made me feel good, because I thought, isn't that nice? I'm going to be teaching at Bard for a long time. And now I have been teaching at Bard for a long time. And I will say, it still feels nice. It feels great. So it is hard to leave. But since I am parting from you physically, I, at least on the campus, <laughs> um, I really I think it's very important to say what an extraordinary experience it has been for me to be a part of this institution. And I want to thank everyone here and on the campus that has been part of that experience, all the staff, the administration, the faculty, and of course, all the wonderful students who every year without fail, inspired me to be the best teacher I could possibly be. And I want to thank you all for that. It's a magnificent gift. Thank you. I now call upon Maria Simpson, professor of dance, to join me in presenting the next recipient of the Bardian Award. I have the honor of introducing Jean Churchill, who received the Bardian Award. <laughs> 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 
For 42 years, Jean Churchill has been the mainstay and guiding force in Bard's program in dance. Jean is a fabulous teacher, superb choreographer, and a fearless advocate of dance in the curriculum. You succeeded Eileen Pasloff and guided dance at Bard through a period of growth and expansion that included the creation of the Fisher Center of the Performing Arts. Dance demands courage, and you have been unstinting in your efforts to bolster the confidence of your students and their command of many languages of dance. You gave them the space to express the power of their imaginations. Beloved by colleagues and students alike, you've shaped a distinguished legacy and secured a tradition. So this presumes to be a quote from Agnes de Mill. The truest expression of a people is in its dances and its music. Bodies never lie. <laughs> and this is the, the Miranda over here. Thank you, Leon, for your leadership throughout these years, and significantly for your compassion during the 10 years that my husband, Bob Cedar, battled cancer. Thank you. Thank you, Maria, for your inspired, incredible leadership of the dance program for these past years. Those of us who work in the theater know about Tech Week when there's a table right there with the artistic management and the stage management and the design team sit, and the dancers and the actors and the singers and the musicians are on stage, and the entire group works together to form a team, there is nothing like the thrill of this collaboration working toward opening night. Working at Bard College can be very similar to life in an experimental dance company, where we encounter the excitement of invention, risk-taking, difficulties, and support. Some of my time here have, have, have shown these highlights. Working on dance, opera, theater, learning more about the art of choreography and all of the arts. Working on committees, and team taught courses where I came to see this college as a breathing, living community of which I was thrilled to be a member. Working with the Frank Gehry team back when this orchestra pit was an orchestra pit shaped hole in the earth, trying to design a new facility for our dance and theater students. Learning to teach and making deep friendships with students, who are many of them are now alums, and staff, and faculty, whom I hope to know for the rest of my life. I want to honor some of my barred mentors who have left this earth. Jean French, John Pruitt, John Fout, Natalie Lunn, Lenore Latimer, Bill Driver, and Eileen Pasloff. In my career with the Boston Ballet, I was a goblin, bird, soldier, sylph, maid, peasant, handmaiden to Persephone, doll, snowflake, flower, wild thing, and Swan, during my time here at Bard, I can confirm that I have performed all of those roles. <laughs> Thank you for this award. I now call upon Colleen Murphy Alexander, class of 2000 and Vice President for Administration, to join me in presenting the next recipient of the Bardian Award.
I have the honor of introducing Randy Klum Sr., who will receive the Bardian Award. We honor you, Randy Klum, for 42 years of dedication to making the buildings of the college safe and functional and its grounds healthy and beautiful. And for the years of keeping the roads and paths maintained, snow and ice removed, grass kept, cemetery cared for, events perfectly set, projects progressing, and for 35 commencements orchestrated and carried out successfully under your direct supervision and oversight. Few have cared as deeply as you about making BARD as practical and beautiful as can be. Every student, every staff member, every faculty owes you and the entire buildings and ground staff a debt of gratitude. You oversaw the integration of the Montgomery Place campus and you guided the construction of Honey Field, just two new jewels on the campus that came into being under your watch. You carried your enormous responsibilities as Director of Buildings and Ground with uncommon integrity, grace, and warmth. This award is a token of the college appreciation for making all that the college does possible. We're really going to make sure the chair you get doesn't break. Okay, thank you. <laughs> So this says on the back, very simply, for 40 years of dedicated service. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank my family for their uh, commitment to me throughout these years, my wife, Marcy, my children, Randy Jr., Lori Beth, Michael, and Joseph. I also would like to thank Dick Griffiths, Chuck Simmons, Jim Brudvig, and Colleen Murphy Alexander for believing in me and my ideas. I am proud to have them as colleagues. My accomplishments were also made possible by the loyal B&G staff and their belief in me as a colleague and mentor. This, this award is truly an honor, and I want to thank President Botstein for even considering me for this award. Thank you. I now call upon Sanji Barua, Professor of Political Studies, to join me in presenting the next recipient of the Bardian Award. I have the honor of introducing Richard Davis, who will receive the Bardian Award. We honor you, Richard Davis, for the elegance and importance of your scholarship and for bringing to Bard your dedication to the highest standards of excellence in learning. Your contributions have not been limited to your publications in the classroom. The Gamelon Ensemble was your creation, as is the magnificent Davis God Poster Teaching Collection, now part of the Bard College Library Holdings. You provided Bard's curriculum with a global framework and you brought uncommon rigor, originality, and subtlety to the comparative study of religion. Generations of Bard students will recall how you opened their eyes to tra traditions and beliefs beyond what was familiar to them and cultivated the habits of close critical scrutiny and empathetic understanding necessary for understanding ourselves and others. And on Richard Davis's chair, it says, from the Bhagavad Gita, your obligation is to the action and never to its fruits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So thank you to President Botstein. Uh, and I'd like to thank also a, a, a long uh, lineage of deans, uh, starting with uh, Dean Stuart Levine and uh, continuing now with uh, Dean Valbertus, uh, who have uh, been, uh, you know, stabilizing forces, uh, keeping the college running. I want to thank Sanjeev especially uh, and other colleagues in Asian studies and I would like to thank uh, all of the colleagues I've had in uh, the religion program. Bruce Chilton is here. He was here before me and will continue, uh, perhaps forever. <laughs> um, uh, Daniel Berthold uh, referred to 3,000 students. Um, I don't think I've had 3,000 students, but I've had it a lot. And, uh, you know, students over the years are indeed uh, the reason that we um, love teaching here at Bard so much. Uh, there are great colleagues, and uh, it has been wonderful to have colleagues throughout the college, but it's really the students who have made uh, this such a special place. Um, and I want to say, uh, when I first uh, came here 25 years ago uh, from New Haven, um, President Botstein and also Dean Levine were very keen that I uh, move and move my family here to Annandale. Uh, I resisted that. Uh, probably they were right. Um, well, we, don't, we can never know that. Uh, but I have had a sort of a split existence for 25 years, and I would like to thank in particular my wife, Rita McCleary, who is here uh, for keeping the other half of my life um, uh, meaningful and stable. So thank you very much. I now call upon Lisa Sanditz, visiting assistant professor of studio arts, to join me in presenting the next and last recipient of the Bardian Award. I have the honor of introducing Joseph Santori, who will receive the Bardian Award. We honor you, Joseph Santori, for two decades of innovative teaching in the studio arts. Your studio classroom was like no other. Your students learned the work discipline required to make art alongside the joy and inspiration that comes from art. You demanded that today's artists find paths to the art of the past. The students whom you taught learned not only what is required to make art, but how to see and how to understand art as a form of life that mirrors our better selves and can bridge divisions among us with empathy and tolerance. By doing all this, you set an admirable example to your colleagues. This is you. As the last recipient, I'm going to just provide a footnote. In this crowd, I'm not going to ask you to guess, there is a married couple that has gotten the same award. And it's a wonderful coincidence. But this award is by, written by this citation, it's written by Alice Neal, which I think we did a show of Alice Neal's work. Did we not? Long time ago. The minute I sat in front of a canvas, I was happy because it was a world and I could do what I liked in it. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, President Botstein. Um, I'd like to thank Lisa Sanditz for sponsoring me. Lisa and I shared an office, and she's as messy as me, so it's been a perfect fit. <laughs> My old friend Judy Pfaff invited me 
up here in the spring of 201 to teach a painting class, and here I am 21 years later. I didn't intend to hang around this long. I'd like to thank all these deans that were around since I've been here, uh, Stuart Levine, Michelle Domini, and Deidre Altiobertus. And special thanks to Arthur Gibbons, Ellen Driscoll, and Nayland Blake. A lot of other people who I was very fond of. It's too long a list. I've had the privilege of, uh, of, of, over the years of working with a talented and dedicated faculty, a faculty that works hard to ensure the well-being and education of our students, a faculty that is nurturing, but at the same time always pushing hard to get the best out of the students. I learned a lot from uh, working with these young people. I guess patience, most of all. <laughs> Understanding and the ability to listen. I've had the pleasure of working with many students who are now out in the art world, <clears throat> working hard and exhibiting their work, and I have remained friendly with them over the years. <clears throat> the year before this, I advised a senior on her project that involved the 11th century Japanese novel, The Tales of Genji. I read the novel slowly while her project evolved so that I could be in touch with what she was attempting to do. And while reading it, came across a quote from another tale, The Tales of Ice. Ice, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Quote, is there a way to make the past the present, to wind and unwind it like a ball of yarn? On that note, I'll sign off. And in the words of the great Jimmy Durante, for those of you who are old enough to remember him, good night, Mrs. Calabash, <laughs> wherever you are. Thank you all for attending this evening. Congratulations to all our awardees. Congratulations to the class of 2022, 2021, and 2020, who, some of whom are back and will be walking tomorrow. I hope you'll join us tomorrow uh, in the commencement tent for commencement. Uh, tonight, everyone is cordially invited to hear the Bard student soloists and composers in concert with members of the orchestra now, back here in Sosnoff Theater at 9.30 p.m. And for me and for the uh, Alumni Association, thank you again so much for, for coming and for being part of BARD. Thank you.